Hilaire Bembo served on D-Day as a naval officer in a landing craft which carried U.S. Army Rangers for the assault on Pointe de Hoc, Omaha Beach. When his landing craft was damaged, Hilaire and his crew were stranded on the beach, facing enemy mortar and machine gun fire. In this extract from his interview with the archive, Hilaire describes the scene on Dog Green Sector of Omaha Beach and how he led 16 other stranded Navy personnel to safety. We anchored about three in the morning of the 6th of June, 11 miles off Omaha. And we'd all put on clean underwear and so on. This was a thing where when you were going to action, you all put on clean clothes and so on. I suppose about four o'clock, the first wave set out. These were to, to be four of our LCAs. We had 10, of course, four of them, to uh, um, an attempt and assault of the cliffs of Pwanda Ho. Today, this is called Pwanda Hock. Uh, this was a gun battery on a point between Omaha and Utah beaches, which threatened those two beach beaches and, of course, the American anchorage. And it had to be annihilated. And it was the role of these four LCAs to scale the cliffs and uh, put these guns out of action. And uh, I shook hands with their commanding officer, Colonel Rudder, as he went down the scrambling net and wished him and off they went. And we, the remaining six of our ten, were a follow-up group. And we were to uh, rendezvous at a, a certain point and await a success signal, which was to be very lights from Point de Hoe. And when we got these um, very lights, we were to go in. I had the Ameri American Rangers bailing out with their tin helmets, because the water was coming in over the door. They had all their equipment, even their rifles, all in uh, plastic to keep them dry. And they couldn't use their radios. They had no wireless communication. Uh, this, I subsequently learned, was one of the um, failures, one of the um, failures of, uh, of the DJ thing, that they, there was no wireless communication. But this was because it was all enclosed in waterproof coverings. We circled in the rendezvous area, and no success signal came. And uh, we were, you know, being tossed about in the waves. And uh, so we um, decided to follow our plan B, which was to approach uh, dog green section of Omaha Beach coming in on the bearing of a conspicuous church tower of the village of Veerville. We should have landed a seaward of the obstacles, obstacles, but because of this delay of half an hour, the tide had risen and was in amongst the obstacles. And when we arrived, we had to make our way through these obstacles and of course there was this terrible surf we heard crunch which was the signal of having landed and a down door and the troops moved forward but we had in fact hit a, a runnel a, a sandbar the lca uh, dipped and its nose went under the water and it went right it of course all the water came in and straight through to the engine room the, the troops of course had left uh, Omaha had these high cliffs on, uh, on which the cherries were um, situated. Mortar fire was coming down. I realized we were sitting ducks. This LCA was stuck on this uh, sandbar, and if anybody wanted to sh sh shoot us, they could. So I said to the fellows, I, I said, get, get out and stand around, you see, uh, which we did up to our necks in water, and somehow or other, we, we, we felt safe, you know. <laughs> Of course we weren't, because the shrapnel could have come through the water and hit us and on, but you just, up to your neck in the water, you felt safe. I suppose we must have been there for an hour or so, and it's calmed down. Steven Spielberg, in his film Saving Private Ryan, has all this terrible carnage and stuff going on on Dog Green. But while all that was happening, we were in the water. Eventually I decided that we could um, go ashore. And um, at, the, um, at the water's edge, we um, hollowed ourselves out uh, sort of troughs in the shingle. There, was, there were no troops really in sight, and everything seemed quiet, so we crawled on our tummies up the beach to the shelter of a bank, which sort of put us out of sight of the jerrys on, on, um, on the bluffs. 
uh, we had had sea boots, which are like Wellingtons, yeah. you know. And of course, when they're filled with water, they become dead weights, and mm -hmm. one had kicked them off. And it suddenly dawned on me that there I was with bare feet on this uh, shingly beach, and mm -hmm. obviously I couldn't stay there all, all day. I, I, I crawled down to the all these um, dead bodies all flopping about. The sea had washed their shirts off, and a lot of them were, were naked. Spielberg, in his film, has... Um, bodies on the beach in uniform, but they were in shirts which had been ripped off by the surf. And on my tummy, looking either side of me, there was a, a wall about two foot high of these uh, flopping dead bodies. And their hair, they were crew cut hair. Uh, and as the uh, sea washed inwards, the hair was laid flat. And as it receded, the hair stood on end. Receded, the hair stood on end. And you had all these coconuts waving backwards and forwards as you lay on the beach looking either side of you on this line. So anyway, I just took a pair of boots and I undid the laces and boots off and his toes looked just like mine. And uh, with these boots, I crawled. And uh, these British uh, fellows came to me and sort of, you know, said, what, what do we do, sir? Well, you know, we're here. And... Uh, Anyway, we gathered all together, and um, I suppose about lunchtime, I could see LCTs coming in about two miles to the east uh, in, the, in the distance. You could, you could see activity happening there. And I thought, well, if we make our way along the, the coast under the shelter of these banks, and we could um, get to that area and be taken uh, uh, off the beach. Uh, I, I should explain, um, a lot of lorries were offloaded by various craft, and because they couldn't beach, they were all cheek by jowl on, on the beach, waiting to, um, for the exits to be captured. And one caught fire, and this, this set fire to another, and there were whole patches of burning lorries, black, thick black smoke, which gave you a certain amount of confidence of taking refuge in the black smoke. The black smoke. Spielberg in his film has white smoke. I don't know why, maybe artistic license or something, but it, it was black. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we began crawling along. I remember there was some enormous ship which had been grounded on the beach with its bows up, and we came round, we came round the bows, and behind it, under the lee, were all these stretcher parties, all laid out in neat lines. It was a rather sort of, you know, Horrifying sight in a way. Uh, that, that gave us a bit of a jerk. And uh, we, we crawled along, and I suppose about uh, 5 thirteening, we came to uh, abreast of these craft coming in, these LCTs and things. And under the cover of this black smoke, which was still about, I went down to the water's edge. I went up the ramp of an LCT, and I said, uh, I've, I've got a party of British naval ratings here. Uh, could you take us back to England, please? Yes, come aboard, buddy, said the, the officer, you see. So, uh, very welcoming. So I go back through the black smoke to where these fellows are all taking refuge under the cliff or whatever it was. And I said, come on, we've, we're, we're going home. <laughs>